What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Learning to Draw and Paint with Upari, a supplemental video series for viewers and students that will be taking in-person classes with me. Today we are going to take a look at symmetry and proportion. The reference that you're seeing is actually on the painting. We will not have the reference on the painting or sorry on the side like you're used to with the typical YouTube video but it's here for you to see what we are going to be uh, studying today. So I'm going to take the reference off. Now remember this is a supplemental video as I said so this is made for students that are taking in-person classes with me if you're interested in taking classes with me in person and you live near the Maryland DC Virginia area please see the link in the description box of this video to the Yellow Barn School in Glen Echo Maryland so uh, let's get started with this demo so remember in class everyone you're going to be painting along with me with each one of these classes and I will demonstrate every step of the way stopping periodically to give you uh, advice and support on your painting. So painting and drawing are not going to be differentiated. Remember everyone that when you're drawing or you're painting, you're problem solving. They are the same thing. We are going to work in monochrome yet again. Last week you decided that we would, uh, you voted on doing another face study. So we're going to do another sergeant study. Today is going to be on Symmetry and proportion. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult than last time because last time it was a profile view. This time it's going to be a three quarter view, which is closer to uh, straight on, which is more demanding on symmetry. So uh, take a look at the camera where you see me. I will be moving back and forth periodically. We are going to use the proper stance, meaning we're going to be an arm's length away, having this 90 degrees and at eye level. So we're going to make a mark for the top, we're going to make a mark for the bottom, I'm going to make the head a little bit bigger than life size or a lot bigger than life size because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So remember, since you're watching this most likely after class ended on Sunday, this is an extra video for you to watch in case you miss anything. Uh, you missed anything on Sunday if I went too fast for you or um, you know some, anything was missed. So we're locking a basic shape as you see there. Big sweeping lines, simple straight lines and angles. Locking where the head is going to fit. The facial hair is going to be somewhere about right over there. Top of the head, the forehead is going to be somewhere over there. Now we're going to go and throw in somewhere about there, a little bit taller than um, the perfect middle between the top and the bottom. Somewhere up here is going to give us the angle for the axes of the eyes. Now remember, this is not intended for you to try and get perfect uh, likeness. This is to give you experience with this more difficult uh, task, which is portraiture, especially when the uh, the setup is more symmetry uh, dominant, symmetry based. So now we've got a line right there for where the nose is going to fit. Line right there for uh, the corner of one side of the eye socket. Right there for the other side of the eye socket. And now we're going to go and we're going to lock in a careful shape. Now I toned the canvas this is just cotton canvas uh, I toned it with um, just black and mineral spirits so I'm just drawing with black and mineral spirits in class you were drawing with raw umber because raw umber doesn't get as dark but I'm using black because it'll be easier for you to see so now we created see that a little zigzag motion there for the um, shadow shape of the side of the face Carefully looking at the edge of the forehead, drawing a specific line here, down, over. So these are giving us more specific lines that we can lock into and adjust as we need to. Give yourself room to make corrections. Keep your shape simple and easy. Uh, most of you know what I'm going to say, such that when the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. A line there gives us an indication for where the eye is going to fit within that line for the eye socket. 
The edge of the head is right about there. Edge of the forehead there. These are very careful lines, but loose. You want your lines to be workable. Remember, in the first class, we talked about workable lines, whether you are using charcoal, uh, pastel pencil, or oil paint. Those are the primary materials that we're using. Sargent wasn't perfect on his symmetry. Uh, this nose is actually a little bit, uh, this nostril is actually leaning down a little bit. So now, line there, line there. I know it looks a little funny, uh, but we're blocking in where the facial hair shapes are going to fit. This, all of this has to do with symmetry. And we're going to get into proportion very soon. And uh, we're going to get into proportion once we have the basic block in in place. Remember we talked about block in last time. I think maybe for the next class we'll probably make it a little easier on, on us and we're going to do maybe like a landscape or a still life. Um, but you, you're going to get to decide or you probably already decided since you're watching this after. Uh, you're probably watching this after the class uh, ended edge of the face. Now likeness is not there. Uh, it's not really something that I'm focused on right now. What we're focused on is basic shape. Okay. Now that we have the shapes in place, now we're going to talk a little bit about proportion. So proportion, uh, when you have two dots in empty space like that, when you've got two dots in empty space, they're meaningless. There's really nothing to talk about because it's two points in empty space. They could be three feet away, they could be three miles away, they could be three light years away from each other in space. Who cares? What, what are we going to do with two points in space? Add a third point in space right there, a third point in space, and all of a sudden, now this dot has a relationship to this dot, has a relationship to that dot. So they are in specific places relative to one another. That is the essence of proportion. Those three dots will give you the essence of what proportion is. It is where is this relative to that, relative to the other thing. So now we can look at this eye socket. Well, where is the corner of this eye socket relative to the corner of the head? Well, I think that, you know, the outside shape of the head, that works pretty good. But now I'm looking at that relative to that because you have to pinpoint something down first before you make an adjustment. So these are going to be my two dots essentially right there this is going to become my third dot and now i'm going to be able to relate this point to this point and this point so the space from this edge right there relative to that side is a problem area so what i can do is stand back first and ask myself what's the problem the problem is that this is too close to this relative to each other they are too close to one another so Use the brush that you used to tone the canvas, or if you're just using charcoal, just use the paper towel that you use for the charcoal and start to make an adjustment. This is how you work with proportion. Now, proportion is going to have, um, you're gonna look at a lot of angles, but you're also going to focus on things that are vertical relative to each other and things that are horizontal relative to each other. And all of the points in between are angles that we can look at comparatively. The next thing we're going to look at is, well, now that we have moved this, moved this eye over there, uh, that was a horizontal adjustment. Now a vertical adjustment is going to be maybe, and the top of the head is going to be here, and the bottom of, say, the chin is going to lie about there. I don't know, that nose, that nose feels like it's a little bit off. Point one, point two, point three is going to be the bottom of the nose. This point relative to that point, you know what? That mm, that's a little bit too cool, too close, Ugh. too close, right? This to this is too close uh, because this point is just too close to this point um, in space, and we are observing that optically. So, well, let's just go and move that up. Remember, I said keep your shapes simple and easy such that when the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. Don't take it too uh, personally when you have to move a nose up like this because that's going to be what's going to uh, give you more of the likeness. So now that we're moving that up, remember, likeness is nothing more than the 
Confirmation of an accurate drawing. Drawing is nothing more than a series of corrections. A series of corrections is necessary in order for you to uh, capture the image that you're trying to capture. Now that we have moved the two eyes, the nose, we have the outside shape, the mouth is relatively well placed uh, because the facial hair is pretty much giving us all that we need. And yes, the chin uh, might have to move up relative to this point a slight bit, but the error is not that big anymore relative to the face that we were looking at. If you bring the reference back over there, you can see how tall the nose is relative to the bottom of the chin. Uh, if you look at the top of the head down to the bottom of the chin. So I made the face a little bit smaller. We're not worried about likeness. This is not a class that's specifically dedicated to portraiture. This is a class that's specifically dedicated to the essence of drawing and painting, the basics with drawing and painting. We are very focused on the basics. We're focused on the stance. Are you standing back in class? Are you moving around? Those of you that are watching this uh, and are too far away from the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, draw along with me. Follow along with each step that you're seeing here because it's going to help you so much to be able to loosen up and to be able to see shape in this kind of way. It's a lot of fun to be able to work this way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to lock into uh, light and shadow shapes. So light and shadow shapes are going to be uh, the first thing that we're going to want to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a simple gray and I'm actually, you know what, I'm actually going to use a larger brush for that. So the brush that I was using to move around, so what we want is a gray that is not straight black, but it's not too light. Um, so there's a lot of room for interpretation with that definition. So now we're blocking in the shadow shape and now we're going to use this to help us to draw. So we're putting in the shadow shape very specifically now, being very cautious not to lose our shapes too much. And we're going to fill this in. And as we do this, we could actually narrow down the edge of the face a little bit and in class I'm going to show you how to make adjustments how to adjust things relative to one another remember you're going to make projections as you move one thing relative to another thing okay so we're pushing this in this is going to give us uh, Rembrandt lighting Rembrandt lighting is that little that little pocket of light right there that's Rembrandt lighting for you and now this is going to give us a shadow underneath of where the facial hair is going to go. And think about the KFC man, uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken logo that they used to have back in the day. It was just two tones and you could tell who the uh, person was, not sponsored by anyone, uh, of course. Uh, so I'm just telling you as um, you know as I feel and this will probably be a, a uh, one of the checkpoints or it probably was one of the checkpoints and from this point once you have light and shadow shape it's easy for you to make changes wherever the changes need to take place so now that we have that down uh, the light and shadow and your proportions are relatively close enough workable close enough now we're gonna go and we're gonna lock in the background tones and we're going to use pretty much just straight paint uh, no no mixing really necessary here I'm using a tiny little palette um, and that's just because I'm not using any color and my other palette has color on it and I don't want the color to uh, start to dry on me that palette is sitting in the freezer so now we're going to go and carefully go into the background locking in the outside shape. Now, if you are a absolute beginner or you know an absolute beginner that is struggling with uh, drawing and painting, don't be afraid to do this one. Just draw and paint along with me. If you want to draw, if you prefer to draw, then use um, charcoal. That's gonna be the closest thing to you. That microphone, sorry, uh, is really close to the, um, to the painting so you're gonna hear a lot of the scraping and moving around of the paint and the idea 
with that is uh, ASMR because I really look up to Bob Ross, the videos that he was able to produce, uh, the way that he was able to convey his passion for art uh, is a great motivation to me. So I, I want to be able to let you hear the painting as well. So it's an audio and visual experience, though for some of you, you may not like the sound, but this is going to be the loudest part where you'll uh, hear the painting process because this is the most broad area. So we're covering and we're thinning the paint out a little bit. If you're using charcoal, you don't have to thin out the charcoal because you just da -da 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 -da, go in with charcoal and there you go. So now we have the background and we have the shadow and we have the light that's already uh, automatic on the face because of the tone of the canvas. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the lights. Now remember proportion and symmetry are going to be something that you're gonna be looking at throughout the entire process. So now that we're going to add light, this is gonna be another time where we're gonna be able to make adjustments if we have to. And because this is just like drawing, this is just like charcoal drawing, uh, you, you can think of it pretty much the same. So that would be like going with a chamois cloth and subtracting. Uh, or if you don't have a chamois cloth, then that would be like the kneaded eraser or paper towel with some pressure. So now start right here on the edge of the forehead. Let that be light, but not your brightest light. And now we're just going to move it. See how we're going to drag it. Less pressure on the edge of the forehead is going to make this a little less dark. The forehead got a little tall on us. So now remember things relative to one another. We're looking at this eyebrow mark relative to this point. And our third point is going to be uh, from here to here. Our third point to relate is going to be down here. So this relative to this is going to be our proportion. So it may go down a slight amount. So you're always going to be adjusting little by little, not necessarily massive adjustments anymore at this point. And throughout the process, there's always going to be small little adjustments that are going to need to be made. So now as we move from left to right, we're going to apply less pressure. Less pressure now, don't press too hard because it's going to get dark on you, I mean light, and uh, you don't want that to get too light because that's actually pushing away uh, from the light. This is lighter because it's pushing closer to the light. And that's all there is to it. It's getting lighter because it's facing the light more. We'll get into form uh, uh, throughout the entire class. We'll talk about things like that, but um, I'm simplifying the form for you as much as I as much as I can. Now take your brush, your light brush, put a little bit of touch of light right there, and now we're gonna have some light on the eyebrow. It is this easy and like before, keep your shape simple and easy such that when the time comes to make changes. Well you can finish that sentence now, can you? Uh, so now we're gonna add a little bit more light to the corner of the uh, eye socket shape for you. Just think about this as just a shape and the more light you put in there, the more paint, excuse me, that you put in there, the lighter it's going to get. And you want to stand back constantly as you're adding these things, looking at the angles. Remember in class, uh, we are going to move canvases all the way to the back and we're going to take a look at all of our paintings and we're going to talk about our paintings as a whole. I'm not going to uh, single out any individual uh, student like we did, um, like we talked about last time. I'm not going to single you out. Uh, we're just going to say one or two things per painting and I'm going to say one or two things per painting and well you already know because you were in class. If you're not in my class, which I guess most of you are not in my in-person class, don't worry about it. So now a little bit uh, less pressure makes this less dark. I also actually touched right into the dark shape that I left there on purpose so I could drag the paint across. Add a little bit more light here and this gives us more form over there. So now as we move our way down we're going to draw out the nose making careful little adjustments straight lines and angles as always Less pressure here makes it less dark. We don't want that to be too dark. And the shape of the nose is going to be very simple, but because of the symmetry, 
Remember, it's going to be a little more difficult than last time. Not that much more difficult. They're both sergeants. They're not um, overly detailed. But the thing about them is that they're so precise. Simple but precise. Okay, so now we have a little bit of light underneath of the nose. A little bit of light right there. Forms a triangle. And all of a sudden we have something that resembles a nose. That it resembles a nose is enough at this point. We don't want to do a super realistic nose. We don't have to because from a distance what matters is the impact that the painting has when uh, someone sees it from a distance. So now we're going to add a little bit more or uh, I'm taking out a little bit for the eye there because I had it a little too wide and now we've got a little more light picking up over here so more pressure I'm slowing the pace down I'm stopping right there so you can see what I'm starting to do and now I'm going to move the brush just less pressure right there I'm just dragging it into the side of the face and this is creating a careful plane change for me okay so this right here creates a plane change this creates form right there without having to do very much in this section right there you see that it's starting to develop right here starting to develop effortlessly we're going in and we're just analyzing shapes this is not an eye this is not a cheekbone this is not a human face these are shapes that's all they are is shapes whether you're painting an apple or whether you're painting a pumpkin whether you're painting uh, a little doggy or a little cat these are just shapes a little bit more light up here and it starts to get darker as it goes down here because you guessed it it's facing the light a little bit less less pressure makes this less dark less light <laughs> excuse me I keep confusing the two um, so less pressure and there you go now we have more form starting to develop on the side of the face now we can go and add a little bit more dark here for the uh, smile line of the side of the face and a little bit more dark here proportion remember one thing relative to another thing now we're moving the facial hair up a little bit okay so we're flattening out this shape there's a nice dark over there this goes down now we can go ahead and uh, pontificate we can uh, hypothesize where the bottom of the chin goes that goes right about there easy going don't worry about the anatomy don't worry about any overly complicated things just focus on shape and guess what I have that a little bit too far out so remember proportion Think about three things. This relative to this. Now relative to this. And it doesn't have to be so specific as a single dot in space anymore, but now we can think about it as a shape. Just one shape. This block relative to this block relative to this block on the outside shape of the face. Well, now it becomes more simple. You're grasping shape and value and you're adding proportion to it and now symmetry all of a sudden you're doing very complicated things in very simple ways uh, and that's the goal that's the goal right there for you to be able to do very complicated things like that and not worry about it don't sweat it don't stress it out um, don't don't stress yourself out so adding a little bit of light there that makes it well darker of course and it's easier to add light into dark so this is now a paint handling thing uh, it's a paint handling thing and now I can zoom you in a little bit let's take that chat box out of there because there's no chat box needed for that and now we're gonna look a little bit cl more closely and we're probably gonna do a little more than 30 minutes on this face because there's more stuff to this face than the Sergeant Madam X. So a little bit of light right there. And remember shape and proportion. I'm looking at this little area relative to all that. 
Okay, so now we have light there. A little less pressure makes it less light. Now we have a little more pressure, but not as much as up there. Now all of a sudden we did a very complicated thing. We moved that eye. Some people would rather move a mountain than move an eye, but it's not that hard. We're going to be moving eyes left and right, just like we're going to be moving uh, uh, mountains, literally mountains, left and right when we're doing landscapes. When we're doing still lives, we'll be moving things around. But, but guess what? This is much harder. Uh, this is way, way harder because, because of symmetry, because of proportion. If you put a tree in the wrong place, well, who cares? Who, I mean, who's going to know if that tree was in the wrong place unless, you know, the, the picture is specific to uh, something architectural or, or whatever, right? Um, and I'm adding a little bit of a value here underneath and dragging the brush over there. Very simple. Keep the shape simple and easy. So, I mean, who cares, right, if we uh, get a tree in the wrong spot, if we uh, move a, uh, a mountain a, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, but, but my goodness, if we put his eye down here, if we go and put his eye down there, we've got a problem. I mean, it, it's, it's like a, an inch, a centimeter, if, if we put it down, it, it's an issue, right? But with this, um, I tell you though, I tell you what, with portraiture, you can actually be a little off. Uh, you can have the likeness a little questionable. Um, the nose could be a little bit long, could be a little bit pointy, like we have here. But no one's going to complain that much about things like that. So that is now another subject that we're going to talk about, and that's going to be error tolerance. Error tolerance. Error tolerance is how much error can we have? How much incorrect stuff can we have relative to other stuff that is more correct and get away with it uh, what can we get away with in portraiture if his eyes are a little bit i mean like a centimeter uh too close um given that this head is about maybe like a foot big well a centimeter relative to a foot i mean come on uh, unless this is a commission if this is a commission, then everything goes out the window because people are going to be, you know, they're going to be tearing the painting apart because uh, good old Uncle John, I mean, his his eye was definitely, you know, it was definitely one plank length to the left, you know. Uncle John, you've got to get his eyes correct. But that's why I always tell you, don't draw or paint someone you know uh, because then there's going to be that psychological connection between artist and model and that's where we run into issues so there is an error tolerance in portraiture you can get it a little bit wrong and be just fine just fine so relax breathe a little so now that we're moving these shapes around relative to one another this is going to be a good place to stand back and double check your proportions and now that you know what proportions are, this is it. This is the essence of painting and drawing. This is it, relating shapes to one another. We've already gone to a point now in what? 28, 29 minutes, not even an hour, uh, not even 30 minutes yet. We've gotten to a point here where that's a good place where we can stop and we can take a lot of pride in what we have accomplished on the canvas but i'm not going to stop there i'm going to keep painting a little bit more so that we can have the facial hair so we can have a little bit more stuff involved in it i told you um and i told you earlier that this would be a little longer than the 30 minutes so now we're popping a little bit more light on the side of the face there this goes in that right there gives you more of a specific shape this goes up a little bit more and perhaps this can get a little bit more light in class this is probably where we're going to leave it 
Uh, in class, we'll probably leave it at this point because what I accomplish in 30 minutes, uh, I want you to be able to accomplish in the two hour class because I've got 14 years experience, I think 14 or 13 years experience, I paint all day. It's my full time, I paint all day. So I want you to be able to follow along with me uh, for what I can do in about 30 minutes. Now, some of you will work faster. Some of you will want more of a challenge. For those of you that want more of a challenge, this is it. Uh, follow along with me now with what I'm doing and I'm not even explaining every little thing that I'm doing at this point because it's actually getting a little bit more complicated but to make it more simple all I'm doing is I'm refining that edge on the side of the forehead it's all about now refinement uh, careful little touches careful little adjustments that's that is what refinement is a little bit more for the bottom of his uh, chin right there we're gonna throw in some shapes for the ears or the ear there's only one ear here because he's in three-quarter view the anti helix the helix and we're gonna start off with this light here remember this is the tragus of the ear bottom of the earlobe it has a relationship on a horizontal axis relative to the mouth relative to the bottom of the nose it just about right there meets with the mouth so nice and simple there and we can have a very uh, specific shape underneath of the ear right there that's going to give us that shadow nice and easy and now we're going to go and add some light to the facial hair we'll just leave the ear like that that's enough to give us and uh, give us the facial hair throw in a little bit of light right there for the mustache carefully now okay now we have the facial hair and uh, we can throw in a little highlight for the facial hair with a light touch like that it doesn't need to be so tight doesn't need to be so specific a little bit of light pulling in here for the goatee A little bit of light down there and now we can add more light notice how I, I uh, squinted my eyes so stand back and squint to simplify to see less blur your eyes to see color but we're not doing color yet we'll get to color soon though and it's gonna be the same with drawing you're working with shapes but you're gonna be working with shapes now with color now that I have that down well now I can see well, I guess the edge of the neck is a little bit too too wide. So I can move that around. And I can go in with the background again, thinning out the paint. And this will, see this, I'm adding that dark. And I'll be able to put in some stuff, some more stuff for the side of the hair. Okay, so I know that you can't see some of the stuff that I'm doing uh, but I'm emphasizing that that point where I said we could have stopped that was the point where I will uh, recommend my absolute beginners to stop and now for those of you that uh, or for those of you that are uh, my absolute beginners that want to go a little bit further then follow along with what I'm doing here this is all about refinement, careful refinement. Refinement is all about subtlety. Subtlety is all about the art of how close can I get something to something else, yet maintain its subtle differentiation. Subtlety is the art of being sneaky in painting, being sneaky in drawing. You're sneaking up to the finish. You're sneaking up to the refinement. And a careful little angle right there. See how I'm dragging the light right into the dark, which gives me a, a modified edge. This gives me the shape of the neck. And now the chin has more of a specific little zigzag, a little up, a little down. And that gives us more of the specific shape for his neck. 
Now I'm going to zoom you out because that's enough for the subtleties of the face right there. You can see it's not as, let's throw in some lights for the hair. You, know, you can see it's not like a super realistic uh, refinement, but from a distance, it, it reads as a face. It's, it's that simple. From a distance, it reads like a face. And at this stage, you can continue to refine the shapes. You can, you can continue to push them around until they're just right. And we're throwing in a little bit of light right there for the hair. Nice and simple. Light and shadow shapes. All it is, light and shadow shapes and mid-tones. So this is building off of the last class. Last class was uh, value and shape and now we're throwing in value shape proportion and symmetry symmetry remember is uh, what differentiates portraiture from uh, pretty much everything else is if I put his eye down there we've got a problem if I put his nose over here we've got a problem it's not the same with a tree it's not the same with an apple if we don't get the likeness correct for an apple or something like that you know it's not a big deal now we're going to cover this off with his head. Boom! I don't want to take his head off like that. Always have a line or something here. Don't just have that floating head. Always have something there uh, for the neck. Okay? No, boom! Off with his head. No. What you want to have is something, anything, even that. Some kind of line indicating where uh, the, the neck is going to go, where the shoulders are going to fall. And now we're going to do something a little bit fun for the grand finale of this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little light right there and pretty much straight white. And I'm using titanium white, uh, straight titanium white down here for the collar. Leave a little room here and add a little bit more over there. And now all of a sudden we're giving him a collar. We're giving him some style. Uh, he, he went to Kohl's and he got his 30% discount on his uh, outfit, right? And and now he's got some style. And that's all it takes is shapes of light. And remember, I'm not sponsored by any, any companies, so uh, I just say these names out of the top of my head, but not sponsored by any of uh, the companies or whatever that I'm mentioning. And uh, just clean up that line a little bit. And, and uh, that should be... Ah, uh, there. Sometimes a little line like that bugs me. But that should be about good for this face. Um, we went a little over. We went 7 minutes over 30 minutes. So uh, that was about 37 minutes um, for the painting demonstration. And it's all about the simplicity. It's all about what we talked about last time. And I didn't even throw in highlights. I don't need them. What I need is just light and shadow and some midtones, and that's it. So remember, last time was about shape, and it was about value. Now, on top of the knowledge of shape and value, we've all of a sudden we've added symmetry because now we've got two eyes. Uh, it, we've got the head and three quarter, and we added proportion. We looked at there's one dot relative to another dot, and empty space is meaningless. Add a third dot, and all of a sudden we can start to relate. We can triangulate where these shapes go and the art of moving your shapes around keeping the uh, fundamentals in your mind keeping your proper stance your proper body position that is going to be what's going to make you better uh, that kind of practice that kind of emphasis on the fundamentals that is going to be what makes you better so remember um, this is a supplemental video series made for the students that are taking classes in person with me to watch over um, after they have taken the lesson in person in case anything was missed or they want to uh, or, or you want to uh, draw and paint from the image again also as it is a supplemental video series I'm making it free for everyone on YouTube to be able to draw and paint along with me so do your best to draw and paint along with me. Maybe put this on a TV screen somewhere so that you can see the uh, image bigger. Pause it if you need to. Uh, pause me and then catch up to where I am. Let the video play. 
pause me again when you need to stop and uh, correct things or move something around. Believe me, these exercises will make you a better uh, painter and a better uh, drafts person, person that draws. Uh, so once again, remember there is no difference between drawing and painting. Painting is nothing more than drawing with color. In this case, we didn't even have to worry about color. Thank you all so much for watching. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.